Hey, this is Matt again, and I'm here to give you part number six of our advanced programming tutorials. Now, we've spent the last um, couple tutorials, or actually all the tutorials so far, on creating a maze game. Now, I think we should expand a little bit because maze games are kind of outdated and they're not the funnest to play. They can get kind of boring and you're kind of limited about the enemies. Um, well, are not limited about anything when you're creating a game, but there, it's just not, for me, it's not the most entertaining type of game you can make. So, I was thinking that we'd start creating a side trolling shooter, which, if you don't know what that is, I can show you an example here. This is a game that Keystroke Games is creating called, uh, Cyber Strike. And I think this game is pretty cool, so I'm going to show you this. And just to give you a taste of what the side scrolling shooter would be like. So here we are, and you can see our player here. You look at it from the side, and your gun always points towards your mouse, which is one of the main features, which allows you to aim very precisely. Because, see, if I pull the trigger, I can shoot. So, um, and you can reload, you can jump. You can your character looks side from side when you move the mouse. Um, there's a lot more advanced graphics involved. Well, at least in this there is. And there's and see everything's from the side instead of being from the uh, top, which tends to make it a lot. It's a different style, and I think it's a lot easier to convey action and storylines with this style instead of being from the top. So, we're going to be creating a game like this the next few tutorials, and it's going to take a while, but I think we're going to be able to do it. Now, just as a precursor warning, you are going to be able to follow in the first few tutorials if you don't have Pro Edition, but unfortunately, this is where the Game Maker Pro Edition comes in. If you want to create a side-scrolling shooter, which is one of the coolest kinds of games you can make with Game Maker, you're going to need to buy Pro Edition. Um, you can, I'm pretty sure you can still buy Game Maker 8 Pro, just not, not 8.1, because that's what I still use for Cyber Strike, because we started making it with that. And, um, Game Maker 8 Pro works completely fine. Game Maker 8.1 just has some extra features, but it's, it's cheaper than 8.1, so if you don't want to buy the newest version, it's okay, and I think you might even be able to upgrade or something. But, um, I, I still use 8, because when I'm using Pro, so, I'm going. I I have Game Maker 8.1 Pro, and we're going to be using that later in these tutorials. But you are going to want to start looking into buying it because you're going to need it if you're going to follow these tutorials. So um, we're going to, need to create a new game. So I'm going to call this. Or okay, I'll save it as Side Scroller Tutorial. Tutorial. Or whatever. Why well, you call it the name of your game. So uh, we're going to have to start over again, which is not that bad because we're doing com something completely different, so there's not really anything we can salvage from the old game. But you can, you, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to watch these tutorials. You can have as much fun as you want with a maze game. I worked on a maze game for like six months and it was great at the end. But um, you guys can spend whatever time you want. You can completely ditch your maze game and work on this for all I care. But we're just going to get started on this. So... I'm going to make a new player. That's right. 32 by 32. Now this, these tutorials are going to be more advanced because obviously I'm going to have to, I'm going to go fast through all the things that we, um, we've already learned in the previous tutorials. So, uh, just try to keep up. And this time I'm actually going to create a really lousy stick figure because I am lousy at drawing. And you guys can create whatever kind of a play you want, but just make sure it's from the side. There you go, you're all set. This is our player. Click OK. Now we go into objects. I'm going to call this player. Player. Now, the first thing we need to do is we're going to add gravity to our game, because obviously we're not going to have, we need gravity in our game for it to be a side scrolling shooter. Unless if you want us to be in space. And the physics would get really complicated then, but we're just going to do normal gravity for now. 
So in the step event, we're going to hit, we're going to use this code. That um, for the first thing we're going to do is we want to say we're under controller. We want to go to check empty. Drive that out. We're going to say y is one relative. So what this means is if there's nothing underneath the player, that's basically what this is checking. You can figure it out if you want to look at it, but that's if there's nothing underneath the player, start of a block, we are going to I'm going to remove here there's set gravity. We're gonna set the gravity direction two hundred seventy oops two hundred seventy to point seven. And then we're gonna end the block. And um you're probably like, why are you setting the two two hundred seventy? Well, um, if you look at a circle in Game Maker, 270 degrees is down, and 0 degrees is left. I'm pretty sure. And, um, so you can pretty much orient yourself from there of what the other directions would be. But it's just a little offset, like, just kind of like the grass backwards. But, so the, uh, direct, the angles, 270 is down, just remember that. So now the next thing we need to do is we're going to check the other game because now I can't remember how to do gravity. I always forget things because I'm always adding things. Okay, so you know what? I'm lazy, so I'm just going to copy this and explain it. Uh, but you can't copy into Game Maker 8.1. Oh well. Uh, I'll set the data. Okay. So um, after this, we're going to set the gravity else. So if there if there is something underneath us, we're going to set the gravity to zero. Makes sense. And then I do remember the last thing we need to do is we need to set a terminal velocity for the player. So we're going to say if variable v speed, so vertical speed, is greater than 12. We're going to set it to 12. So variable v speed equals 12. So basically, what this is doing is, if there's nothing underneath us, we're going to fall because there's gravity. And uh, if there is something underneath us, we're not going to fall. It's basically that simple. And if you don't know what terminal velocity is, let's say you were to jump out of a plane, terminal velocity is the point at which um, friction from the air overcomes you're falling so you stay at one speed falling so like you'll accelerate fast when you jump out of the plane but eventually you'll start moving at a constant speed that is kind of advanced but if you just want to google terminal velocity read up a little bit about it I'm guarantee I guarantee you understand it fast it's not that hard also if you ever watch Mythbusters they explain it well in that that's where I got it from <laughs> so um that's the gravity programming for our player next we need to do um a floor so let's create a new sprite edit sprite Oops. And I'm just going to make another black square because I'm lazy. Call this wall. New object. Wall. Now we just set the wall solid if you remember that from the other tutorials. Go into the player object. If we have a collision with wall, we are going to set the vertical speed to zero. So we're going to stop. And the stop block doesn't work when you're using gravity. You have to set the vertical speed to zero. And the other thing is we're going to move to contact and direction. Now for direction, we're going to put in direction, which kind of sounds confusing, and it actually is. I still cease to completely understand to the state. But um, basically what's happening is um, when you collide with a wall, you're going to stop. But to make sure that you're completely contacted with the ground, we add in this. And since you are falling, your direction is going to be 270, which is down, if you remember. So when you hit the wall, you're going to move down with a maximum speed of 12, which is your terminal velocity. So it's just kind of like a double check to make sure, like, if you didn't, if you, like, glanced off of a wall or something, you keep falling, not just stop. It's a little confusing, but, um, that's the best I can explain it. Just copy the code if you want. Um... It will work fine. So that's what happens if you collide with a wall. So now we're going to do a little physics test here. 
So we're going to we're going to put in a floor of uh, floor of walls. That looks perfect. Huh? And um, then we're just gonna push our player on the top here. Click the check mark. Run the game. And hopefully, when it starts, our player will fall and hit the floor and stop. Perfect. Now that seems to be good. Um, that's that seemed to work fine to me. So um, now we're gonna add movement. So add event, um, keyboard. We're gonna use the WSD key. So letters W. We're going. We need to add an extra step again. We're gonna say if position. Um, so this is up. Oh wait. Sorry, for up we need to do set the vertical speed to negative. I don't know. We could try like six or something. So we're just gonna set the vertical speed to like negative six, which will make us jump. And then keyboard letters A, which is left. So what we're gonna do for this is Control check empty X. We're gonna set to negative four. So if it's empty to the left. We're going to be able to move. So if it's empty to the left, we're going to set x to negative four relative. So we just need to make sure it's empty first. So I'm actually going to copy this code here, and um, so I'm actually just going to copy these two right here, so I can put it in our right code. So I'm going to go keyboard letters, and I'm going to select D and paste those. So I'm gonna just change this to normal four, normal four. So, oops. so now instead of negative four, it's four, just four. So um, we're gonna move right now. So hopefully our code will work, and that would be great because. Yeah. So a player falls, and are we able to jump with the W? Yes, we can jump, and we can move back and forth. Okay, that is a problem. Hmm. Let me check if I have time. Okay, I'm running out of time, so we're going to try to fix the jumping problem. I'm going to say, under the W key, I'm going to right click on this, change event, key press. So it only happens once, because what's happening now is it constantly sets the vertical speed to negative 6, which makes you go up constantly. So I'm going to change this to press W key. So now I have this and we can jump. Okay, that, that's working like I think it is. But there's something wrong with the collision with floor. So we're going to look at that. And I, I'm going I'm to change this instead of direction, direction. I'm just going to change it to 270. So we're always going to move down when we hit the wall. So hopefully that will nail out some of the bugs of this weird direction variable that I'm not 100%. There we go. See, now I can move back and forth and jump and everything. So, your game, your side-scrolling shooter is officially started. Um, this is about the limitation of what you can do. Actually, I can teach you how to make a side-scrolling shooter without having the Pro Edition. I can do that if you really want. So, um, I guess just post in the comments if you want me to make one without Pro Edition or with Pro Edition, because pretty much you can figure out yourself that the quality will be better if you use Pro Edition, but I'm not forcing you to pay anything. That would mean. So uh, we're just gonna keep keep with this for now. And before this tutorial's over, before I forget next time, just open up your uh, settings, go to Start in Full Screen Mode, and go to Errors and treat on all initial, uninitialized variables as value zero. That will save us some trouble later on when I get confused. So um, that's the end of this tutorial. Have fun with Game Maker. Thanks, guys.